YouTube. What's going on with y'all, man? One eight six back with another video, man. Back with another reaction video, man. Today video, we're gonna go ahead on and get straight into it, man. You know what I'm saying? We getting ready to be, you know, as y'all can tell by the title and the thumbnail, we getting ready to be doing a little reaction to the rise and fall of the baby. Cause like early I was just sitting here thinking, I'm like, I haven't heard from this nigga the baby, bro. <laughs> like, where is this nigga, bro? <laughs> Like, where is he, bro? Like, it's a couple of people I ain't heard from. But, like, you know, the baby, like, he was popping at the time. Like, he was in a prime. He was in his prime for sure. I don't know what happened to him, but, you know, we getting ready to see what's going on, man. So, you know, let's get into it, man. Let's see. Oh, nah, this this nigga right here a little wild. I ain't gonna lie. Like, he a little wild, but. We getting ready to get into the video, though, man. Y'all make sure y'all like, comment, share, and subscribe, man. The modern rap scene is chock full of controversy, and nobody embodies controversy quite like the baby. His energetic and brash style has won him a devoted fan base, but it has also earned him a reputation for being controversial and divisive. Raised by robbers in his adolescence. <laughs> no, nah, though, because, like, tonight. look, now that I think about it, bro, that nigga did do some crazy shit in Walmart. If I'm not tweaking, this nigga did some crazy shit in Walmart. If I'm not tweaking, bro, like I'm, I can't remember exactly what happened, but yeah. Then no. Front page of Double XL freshman cover. Eight Grammy nominations. Beating up a man in a bowling alley to shooting one of his fans in the gut. This man's career has been a roller coaster, which unfortunately is on its way down. We're gonna go through the systematic timeline of his meteoric rise to the top, his peak and downward spiral, as he went from an icon and the bad boy of rap to absolute meme material. Let's get into it childhood and upbringing. Jonathan Liddell Kirk was born in Cleveland, Ohio on December 22, 1991 and moved to Charlotte when he was seven years of age. This was where he would spend a lot of his childhood. Jonathan grew up surrounded by crime and raised by people he described as robbers, such as his uncle Rick. He followed in those footsteps and innocent, claimed he bro. was involved in street hey, activities. I think they had that shit as a meme once. You were Rick involved in street activities at the age of I think of they 17. had that shit as you a meme one time, bro. Like, this nigga robbers? head or some shit, bro. Like, this shit used to be a meme or some shit, like back when I was in fucking high school or some shit, bro. I like, was this shit was weird, bro. Like it was literally making memes about this nigga head. Like I I don't understand that shit, but yeah, some of them was robbers. Yeah. By the age of twenty one, he was already rich with expensive jewelry, expensive foreign cars, and an expensive condo in downtown North Carolina, Jonathan Kirk has never shied away from his gang-related past and street antics oh, while being interviewed. In 2013, good. Jonathan Kirk has never shied away from his gang-related an expensive condo and Nah, that shit look good. Like, this view is nice. I ain't gonna lie. It ain't better than ATL, but it's hard. In downtown hard. North Carolina, Jonathan Kirk has never shied away from his gang-related past and street antics like while being interviewed. In 2013, at the age of 24, shortly after getting pulled Dennis. up for possession of marijuana and a concealed weapon, he decided it was time to take his talents to the studio. He reportedly sold his cars and condo and invested it into his music career. The steady grind begins. The baby now became Baby Jesus, the chosen one according to him. The stage name was not exactly the smartest of names, considering the religious attitude of the southern United States. Nah, this nigga did used to call himself baby jesus bro brother it ain't nothing holy about you bro like you out here killing niggas bro you out here dropping niggas in walmart dude like come on bro there's nothing jesus about you this nigga <laughs> no nah, that shit funny bro i just realized that shit like that's crazy being no stranger to the grind, he and his crew did everything to promote his music. But like I said, though, when he was in his prime, that nigga was hard, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I was one of the niggas that was listening to him. Shit, I ain't gonna keep it real with y'all. I, I used to listen to the nigga. I don't know about y'all. Hell, shit. I was gonna go to one of the damn concerts, but I couldn't make it that day. So that shit was just tough. But yeah. And product by putting up his posters and stickers on any single object that had a surface. He was also aggressive in promoting his social media presence. At some point, everyone in Charlotte probably knew who he was. From 2014 to 2017, Baby Jesus dropped over 10 mixtapes, starting with nonfiction, his debut mixtape consisting of eight tracks, found only on SoundCloud. He followed up with the God's Work mixtape series and Baby Talk mixtape series. To be honest, his early catalog of music is a bit of 
Hey, I got a question though. Do niggas still drop music on SoundCloud or everybody just be putting that shit on Apple Music, bro? I know the young niggas here in ATL be putting that shit on Apple Music, bro. There ain't no fucking SoundCloud. But we put that shit on Apple Music and call it a day. A mess. A lot of them can't be found at all. Some are on Spotify, some are on Apple Music, and some are on SoundCloud. The biggest track from his series of mixtapes was the track Gorilla Glue. During this time, he also performed at numerous local shows and did everything he could to get his name out there. He eventually dropped the name Baby Jesus and rebranded it as The Baby. A spark of controversy. The Baby had. Do you want to play the latest PC games? But your computer looks like this. So you're stuck playing put in the grind in the effort but in the rap game where countless artists are churned out and looking for their big break it can be difficult to stand out however the baby is a bit of a marketing genius and leveraged the idea of being remarkable to go viral he was familiar with the purple cow saying it's a famous saying which goes God, something like this damn you that's down a fat street, ass chain cow, but chill out driving, hold on go back you, this. you drive down the street you see a cow saying it's a famous nigga that chain big as shit my bad yeah nigga shit is huge <laughs> i want me a chain like that on god the saying which goes something like this you drive down the street you see a cow you keep driving but you drive down the street and you see a purple cow you stop the purple cow is remarkable and it's worth making a remark about you stop taking pictures of the purple cow and share it online now imagine it's not a purple cow but a 25 year old man in a diaper this is what the baby needed to put him slightly over the top he just needed to get his name and his product out there he needed to go viral. <laughs> this nigga had this nigga had on diapers like <laughs> this nigga bro what the fuck dude hey nah that's wild that's wild a diaper is crazy bro but shit he is the baby Oh, he achieved sorry. this initially by showing up to the South by Southwest Festival in Austin, Texas with nothing but a diaper and a towel on his head while rocking a fresh pair of Jordans. But you knew it was going to get on the internet. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so for you're sure. kind of, I mean, you know, trolling is a general kind of term. No, I was the AirPods. The next controversy was what interview. put him completely over the top, but it came at the expense of someone's life. No one has been charged in last night's deadly shooting that happened inside See the Walmart in Huntersville. See what I tell y'all? That nigga popping niggas in Walmart. This nigga is popping niggas in Walmart. Hey, the baby, if you watching this, I don't have no problems with you, my boy. You not finna catch me lacking in Walmart, and I go in Walmart all the time. Hey, you ain't, you can't catch me lacking in Walmart, bro. Like that, that I'm gonna go out so sad. That is, that's gonna be tough. That's gonna be tough for everybody. Like, you can't get caught lacking in Walmart, bro. But he caught a nigga lacking in Walmart, so that's just rough on they end. I ain't gonna lie. In November 2018, he was shopping in Walmart when he came into contact with two men. His version of events states that the men were trying to provoke him so they could pull a gun out. But witnesses and security tape show that the baby was the aggressor and the initiator of the event. The baby eventually shot one of the men, Jalen Craig, in the abdomen. He bled out and died minutes later in the aisle. This was the final piece in the perfect storm for the baby. Previously, he was just known as the strange man in the diaper. As funny as it sounded, it was just seen as a stunt or a gimmick. But when you hear that the strange man in the diaper shot and killed someone in Walmart, you're compelled to pay attention to the strange man and ask who he is and what he's about. He used this newfound fame from the Walmart incident to push his street credibility on social media, as well as having his first album about to drop. Diapers and shootings aside, his career received a massive boost when he was signed to Arnold Taylor, a big shot radio promoter and president of South Coast Music Group label. Taylor was responsible for the early rise of Southern rap stars Future and Yo Gotti. He managed to get a short distribution deal from Rock Nation where he dropped the mixed tape blank blank this proved to be his breakout in late 2018 and featured close friend stunner for vegas this mixtape features the track walker texas ranger and gave him his only genius interview major bidding war started for the baby and he ended up with a massive seven figure deal at interscope records 2019 year of the baby on march 1st 2019 following the interscope records deal the baby's first album baby on baby had 13 tracks and featured artists such as offset stunna Fo vegas rich homie kwan and rich the kid on this album he references historical rap elements and personalities such as suge knight and the lead single suge the lead single reached number seven on the u.s billboard hot 100 the song was later nominated for best rap performance and best rap song at the 62nd annual grammy awards baby on baby debuted at number 25 on the billboard before rising 
rising to number seven. On the same album, the baby also called himself Tupac of New Shit. At this point, he was starting to experience a rapid rise in the industry oh, hey. as he featured bro, time on- out, bro. Go back, go back, go back. That nigga fresh, boy. Nah, that suit clean. Hey, bro, where you get that suit from? I want that motherfucker. Hey, hey. I want that bitch in all black, though. I don't too much care for the color. That bitch is tough, nigga. Damn. The rise in the industry, as he featured on countless other tracks with prominent artists such as Camila Cabello, Post Malone, Trippy Red, Lil Nas X, Megan Thee Stallion, Quality Control, and Dreamville Records. The baby was featured on the cover of Double XL as part of the freshman class of 2019. Later that year, in August, he announced his second studio album, Kurt, a tribute to his father, who died shortly after the release of his debut album, Baby on Baby. The track intro was the promotional single and peaked at number 13 on the Billboard. It was an introspective track that talked about his grandmother and father who died while he was coming up as a rapper 2019 was truly the year of the baby in the industry and he closed the year having the most billboard entries with 22 different tracks sustained success 2020 was no different from 2019. On April 13, 2020, he announced on Twitter that his third studio album, Blame It On Baby, will be released on April 17. The album received mixed reviews but still achieved commercial success, debuting atop the Billboard 200 with 124,000 units sold in his first week, becoming Baby's second number one album. It also produced his highest charting oh, song, Rock right, nah, featuring Roddy Ricch. Real Rick, shit, y'all. It also Go produced Go back. Real shit, his bro. Highest I gotta get me a lamb truck, bro. Look at that shit, bro. Now, I, I know that shit ain't got nothing to do with the damn video. That shit is tough. I got to get one. I don't, give, I don't give three flying fucks, bro. I got to get me a Lamborghini Urus, bro. I have to get a Urus, bro. Them shits are so tough. This, this is really the best SUV that's out. This, shit's look, this shit looks better than a Range Rover, a BMW truck. This, this, this shit, it just looks better, bro. This shit looks better than that Ferrari truck that's out, bro. This is the best looking SUV. I take this shit over a track hawk. Yeah, you talking about over a track, nigga. This shit better than the track. This is this is grown man shit right here. You know what I'm saying? Like this is that guy. If you got a problem with it, just let me know. We can argue. This is the best fucking truck. I'm just letting you know. Charting song, Rockstar, featuring Roddy Rich, which spent seven non-consecutive weeks at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and reached number one. It also received the Grammy Award for Record of the Year nomination. In May 2021, he temporarily surpassed Drake's monthly listeners of 52 million to become the most streamed artist. He was surpassed by Lil Nas X a few weeks after. In his three years of mainstream success, he had billions of streams, eight Grammy nominations, and multiple certified platinum records. But all that was about to change. The baby's downfall. Dating back to 2020, the baby had been inciting controversy around him. But in 2021 and 2022, all hell broke loose for the baby and his antics. There were high profile and low profile blunders from the North Carolina native. Let's start from the bottom till we reach the top. At the beginning of 2020, he got detained in Miami in connection to a robbery investigation, where the baby assaulted a concert promoter for allegedly shorting him on $10,000. For retribution, he stole his $80, iPhone, and credit card. Here's one thing you need to do before buying anything online. Don't that spend another dime on wow, bro. Amazon until you watch this card before dousing the victim in apple juice. <laughs> yes, apple juice. It's the little details that make a great story. When he was brought in for questioning, it was discovered that he had an outstanding warrant on his record for a battery charge in Texas where he reportedly assaulted a kiosk worker. This nigga is going crazy. This nigga just beating niggas ass left to right, bro, for no fucking reason. Like, he just, like, it's like he's just knocking niggas. Like, if you, okay, if you in the store, right, and then you walk past him, you look at that nigga, he gonna beat your ass. Straight up. He gonna beat the dog shit out of you. Like, that's basically what, that's basically what he out here doing at the Dallas Damn. airport. Then 
Just a few months later, in March 2020, he slapped a female fan at a club when she was requesting a picture. He later apologized on his Instagram by explaining that he could not see because the fan used the flash of her phone to almost blind him. In February 2021, he dropped the song Beatbox slash Freestyle, where he held up a picture of Jojo Siwa, a kid YouTuber, and called her nasty names. This was one of the first things that turned audiences against him because he was beefing with a literal child. He eventually apologized by telling her his daughter was a big fan of hers and that the wordplay went over people's heads. In a viral clip, the baby was seen mocking and clowning a flight attendant for not combing her hair properly. You gonna pay all that for that flight, you gonna comb your hair. Straight up, they die, dog. You gonna pay all that? You gonna comb your hair, the least you could do. On April 7th, 2022, he apparently tried to kiss a fan. He appeared to be- You can comb your hair, that's the least you can do. That's crazy, bro. Like, that, he, he just out here talking crazy to people, bro. <laughs> this nigga is legendary. <laughs> this nigga is legendary. Like he he's unbeatable. This nigga said the least you can do is comb your hair. I'm finna start telling folks that be very intoxicated and was caught up with a group of people outside the club. He targeted one woman, grabbed her face, and made an attempt to kiss her, and it didn't go well. He was left looking stupid, and he went on Instagram to defend himself, saying he didn't actually want to kiss her. Just six days later, the baby was in the headlines again, this time for shooting a man in his leg for trespassing in his house and calling his name. Charlotte rapper DaBaby was home last night during a shooting on his property. That's according to the Troutman police chief. DaBaby was not injured in all of this. In April alone, the baby did something newsworthy every so basically on the 22nd. so basically this man blew up off of doing crazy shit violent shit he like his music just didn't get out there the normal way bro like this nigga was going viral for beating niggas ass bro and smacking bitches bro like what the fuck <laughs> nah bro that shit funny i ain't gonna lie 2nd of April, just nine days after shooting the man's leg, he sucker punched his own artist, Wisdom, backstage at the Summer Jam 2022. Now things started getting out of hand. Remember when Megan accused Tory Lanez of shooting her in the feet? Tory was charged with felony assault for the crime. Then he and the baby had a collaboration not soon after on the track Scat. The baby and Megan were previously super tight as they had collaborated on some projects before. This collaboration between Tory and the baby left Megan with a bad taste in her mouth. Then she went to Twitter to vent about the baby being hypocritical in their friendship the baby responded that he had no bad energy toward her but at the rolling loud concert after megan got off the stage the baby came out and invited special guest tori lanes to perform their track with megan watching from the sideline but this was just the beginning of the major bombshell the next thing the baby was about to do would erase him from hollywood's good books forever before he got off stage he went on to do something even stupider something that will affect his career as he had never seen before taking a short break from his set he uttered some totally inappropriate homophobic remarks Marks. He suggested that gay men were promiscuous, dirty, and disease ridden. You didn't show up today with HIV, AIDS, any of them deadly sexual transmitted diseases that make you die. Nah, he counseled. He's counseled, bro. That is what got him counseled. You, bro, you cannot talk about people like that, bro. Like, what are you doing? You are a social media influencer. You are a rapper. You are the eye of the public. You are in the public eyes. Like, dude, you cannot talk about people like that, bro. Come on, the baby. Like, bro, you cannot do that. Some stuff you just don't do. And that's one of them. It's talk about people. You you can't do that, bro. I'm sorry, but you can't do that, bro. I ain't, I ain't trying to tell you what to do, but you can't do that, bro. Jesus Christ. This nigga is cold. This nigga, this is, this is a cold nigga, bro. He said that shit in front of probably hundreds of, I ain't even gonna say hundreds of thousands. He said that shit in front of thousands of people, bro. That is wild. Put his cell phone like the up. Fellas. Lights up. Fellas, if you ain't sucking in the parking lot, put your cell phone like the Let's be real about this shit. Yeah, keep it real. 
This speech was met with instant and widespread backlash from the internet. In the ensuing days, celebrities came out to like Dua Lipa, Elton John, and Madonna. With the upward getting bigger, he decided to apologize, kind of. With his half-hearted apology, people had had enough. Partners like Boohoo Man Clothing cut ties with the rapper. Scheduled performances were- <laughs> Nah, bro, you going out too sad, nigga. You, you got cut by Boohoo Man, bro. That is cr- Bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Yeah, you, you, you're done. You're done. You got cut by Boohoo Man, bro. That is insane. So, were canceled what? like Lollapalooza in Chicago, Park Life Festival in England, and the government. I'm telling in you, bro, bro, when you are a social media influencer or any type of eye of the public, like anything like that, bro, like you, you gotta watch what you're doing, bro. Cause, like, let's be real, bro. When you do social media these people is what's paying for your lifestyle bro like you know like let's just be real like let's just, like let's just be 100 about shit like these people are the reason why you have lifestyle you have and then you go and talk about these that is wild bro in a different interview the baby gave a dollar value for how much the controversy is worth man. i had 30 million dollars worth of shows on the schedule before december 31st i was gonna buy my private plane but it is what it is it go how it goes the baby has had to cancel an upcoming this nigga's just cold about it bro like he don't need your king fuck. center after he failed to sell up to 500 tickets for a venue That's that wild. can house up to 14,000. after a year of dangerous and reprehensible behavior from the baby internet had a field day with this news six months later he was invited back to rolling loud but the audience unforgivably threw drinks at him this made him become a total meme online and he got clowned for almost anything he did even to the point of a now suspended twitter account being created to check if the baby had done anything headline worthy every day approaching rock bottom his recent album released in september 2022 baby on baby 2 debuted at number 35 on the billboard and sold 16k units in the first week which was 87 percent less than baby on baby which sold 124k and debuted at number one on the billboard but the baby still gave himself a pat on the back for the tepid sale not bad for the black ball baby he said on his instagram stories the baby is a complex and controversial figure in the world of rap music and currently there is no telling what the future holds for the baby this so-called genius marketer might have no idea how to reverse his bad current publicity. Being blackballed is a one-way stop to obscurity. Nah, that is crazy, bro. That is crazy. Man, y'all fo let me know how y'all feel about that. I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. That shit is just tough. That's all I got to say about that. So I'll catch y'all next video, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, share, subscribe. You know, and we gonna be back with another video.